Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer, and today on our 2023 Kia Telluride, we're going to be checking out and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Universal Brake Controller Install Kit. Using this kit is going to allow you to accomplish a few different things. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to get a seven-way round type connector plug, that way you can plug your trailer into it. And something that I like is it also has a four-way flat connector right next to it. So you have multiple different types of trailers, you don't have to deal with an adapter or anything like that. Um, but this is also going to come with all the items you're going to need for the most part to get a brake controller installed. Um, you know, it's going to allow you to have power to the brake controller and let that trailer brake controller send power back here through our connector going to the trailer uh, and applying the brakes. So not only that, you're also going to get 12 volt auxiliary power. So you'll have 12 volt power back here. So if your trailer has, um, you know, batteries on it that need charged or things of that nature, um, it'll allow you to do that. And then of course you'll get all your uh, basic signals, you know, your tail lights, brake lights, um, as well as your turn signals. I do want to mention in order for everything to function properly and actually be able to install this, you are going to need existing four-way flat trailer wiring already hooked up on your Kia. Uh, on ours, we use the Takancha Universal Kit and it worked out really well. And this kit will give you a bracket to mount up your seven-way, but if you want to have it kind of sorted like ours, I used a no-drill long bracket, clamped it to the hitch and put a bend in it. That way it kind of pushed it out and made this look decent and be easily accessible. But other than that, at the end of the day, you know, if you're trying to hook up a brake controller to your Telluride, or you're just wanting to have a fully functional seven-way back here, uh, definitely the way to go. As far as the installation is concerned, uh, it's quite a bit of work. You know, I'm not gonna lie, there's uh, a lot of wiring that you have to route and things like that, but hopefully we can help you, uh, help you out and get you going in the right direction. So as long as you stay focused, shouldn't run into too many issues. But with that said, why don't we go ahead and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our Kia. And first thing we need to do is mount up our connector plug here. So I've taken the included bracket as well as a long bracket that I picked up separately and got that secured. And then what I like to do before we mount it is actually kind of start to prep the connector. Just makes it a little bit easier to do outside of the vehicle as opposed to underneath. First thing I'm gonna do, this four-way connector end, I'm gonna cut this cap off because this is gonna plug into our existing four-way wiring. And then you're gonna have an individual yellow wire. Um, I just tape that up because this is for our reverse light circuit and we're not gonna be using that. And then I like to change out the buck connectors. So this comes included with these pre-attached ones already and these will work fine. I like to upgrade to these heat shrink style ones the ends will seal up and just provides a little more protection against corrosion. So I'll strip our wire back, put on the connector, and crimp it down. We'll feed all of our wires through our bracket, line that up, and what you're going to do is take the screw put that through and then on the back side of it take a flat washer a split lock washer and a hex nut we'll do that for our three remaining corners underneath of our vehicle well we're going to take our existing four pole wiring we're using the Takancha uh, kit this will work out real well for what we're doing here today. I'm going to cut that cap off. And then I'm going to take some dielectric grease, put it on our four pole here. And this just helps against corrosion. And go ahead and simply just plug that right into our existing four pole. So I made this connection somewhat permanent. I taped it up and then ran a zip tie around it to prevent these from coming apart. And then I made some other connections. So the kit's going to come with the big roll of duplex wiring. And if you carefully strip that gray sheathing back, it'll expose two wires. 
a black one and a white one. And the black one will be for our 12 volt power. So that just gets connected to the black wire coming out of our seven way. The white wire from our duplex wiring will be for our electric brake signal. So that gets butt connected to the blue wire coming out of our seven way. And I notice the white wire is a ground. It's coming out of the seven way. That'll have a pre-attached ring terminal on it. But given the space that we have to work with here, uh, it, it wasn't quite long enough, at least to ground it in a spot that we prefer. So what I did was take maybe a foot and a half of white wire, butt connected it, crimped on a ring terminal. We'll ground this in a minute, but first, since we have these heat shrinks, I'll come in with my heat gun here and seal up the ends. So I went ahead and kind of used uh, some electrical tape on all our connections and zip tied it all up. And the duplex wire, as well as our ground wire that we extended, runs up through here. The ground wire, I use the provided self-tapping screw and attach it to this uh, piece of the frame here. When you use a ground or uh, you know, attach a ground wire, you want it to be touching clean, solid metal. So this is a real good spot here. But with that said, our uh, duplex wiring, we can now start to route towards the front of the vehicle. And that's because it's gonna go up into the engine compartment. So it'll flow up through here and above our subframe. The wire's gonna continue to run towards the front. When you're uh, routing your wiring, be sure to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. But with that said, it's gonna continue along. And there is, in our case, a plastic shield here. Um, there's a couple 10 millimeter head bolts you can pull out, kind of drop it down, give you more room. But essentially, our wiring is just going to follow our brake lines here. So you can secure it every now and again with the zip tie. And then it's going to go right up into the engine compartment. Up in the engine compartment, this is where our wiring came up. And right here, what I did was I completely removed the rest of our gray sheathing. So I got that completely out of the way. The white wire, that's gonna run inside of our vehicle down on the driver floorboard. We'll get to that in a minute. What we'll focus on first is the black wire coming from our duplex wiring, which that's gonna run over here where we have our breakers mounted up. So there's a 40 amp breaker, which is this one. And then in our case, we have a 20 amp breaker. That'll be the case for most of you out there as well. Uh, see your brake controller instructions, see what they recommend. A lot of times it'll be 20. So 40 amp, 20 amp. The black wire that's coming from our seven way, from our duplex wiring, that's gonna get connected to the silver post on our 40 amp breaker. All right, so you'll cut that wire to length, crimp on a small ring terminal, slide it over the post, and tighten the nut down. Use a 3 8 socket. You don't have to crank down on these, get them snug, and that will be sufficient. From there, on our 40 amp breaker, as well as our 20 amp breaker, you're gonna take some black wire, small ring terminals on the gold posts. Those are gonna to run to our positive battery terminal. All right, so I got them routed over here and crimped on some ring terminals. We're not gonna hook them up to power just yet until we have our brake controller and everything else hooked up, but at least they're ready to go. And then that leaves us with one more post on our circuit breakers. All right, so that'll be the silver post on our 20 amp. You're gonna take black wire, or you can use, um, you know, if you, the white wire is super long inside the cab, you can cut that to length, kind of up to you. But regardless, ours is black here. Uh, that'll go from the silver post on our 20 amp, and run back, and that's actually gonna run inside the vehicle along with our white wire, down to the driver's side floorboard. So, I did have to create a hole to get these wires through there. Um, it's a lot easier seen from inside. So why don't we go ahead, move in there and check it out. Here inside the vehicle, we're underneath the driver's side dash. And here's the 
hole that I created to get our wires to pass through. So uh, just make sure whenever you drill, you're not gonna drill into anything. And I suggest using a little snap bushing like I did to put in there. That way the metal doesn't scrape against the wires and damage it. At this point, with exception of hooking up the ring terminals to the positive battery post, this is about it as far as a brake controller install uh, kit goes. With that said though, you know, you're not gonna be putting this in without doing a brake controller. So from there, or from here, you'd simply hook up your brake controller um, as it is recommended in the instructions. Back under the hood, we hooked up our power cables. So this nut is a 10 millimeter. You can back that off, get the terminal slid under there and tighten it back down. Not really much to it. On the cover here, I did cut out a portion of it. That way you could completely close it and lock it down. And now all that's left to do is test our uh, test everything out to make sure it's working properly. Since everything's hooked up, uh, I'm using a test box to check everything. Probably not gonna have one of these uh, at home, so you can always plug into your trailer, but keep in mind if your trailer has any issues, it might mislead you into thinking it's something you did on the vehicle side, but we'll try all of our signals. There's left, right, our tail lights, our brake lights, that top right corner, we have our 12 volt power. And then if I either hit the brake or the manual override on our brake controller, we can see we're getting brake output back as well. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com universal brake controller install kit on our 2023 Kia Teleride.